Just because an opinion is held by a lot of people doesn't mean it's correct. After all, people used to think that the sun orbited the earth and that tomatoes were poisonous. And if we fast forward to today, there are a lot of people who think that JavaScript is a great first language to learn because it's easy and it's popular. Well, as a software architect who knows over a dozen languages, I'm here to tell you that easy and popular have nothing to do with making you a well-rounded and effective developer. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, and I have helped thousands of people launch their coding careers by teaching them to code the right way. So let's kick things off with the type system. In most programming languages, you have to be specific about what type of data you are trying to use. Is it numeric? Is it text? Is it a true false Boolean? And so forth. This allows computers to better optimize how much memory they need to store for your applications. JavaScript, on the other hand, does not require this level of detail. And this is one of the reasons why people point to it as a good language for beginners. But let me assure you, when developers build applications for enterprises at scale, they spend a lot of time thinking about the types of data they're going to use and how they're organized. And skipping this means that people who learn JavaScript as their first language are usually unprepared to transition into other languages that require that level of pre-planning and detail. Additionally, these type systems make it much easier to troubleshoot and debug your code. There are situations in JavaScript where you might misspell something, and JavaScript thinks that you're just creating something new, and that's fine, and it just rolls along without errors. This is not the same as other languages like C Sharp, Java, C++, and so forth. If you misspell something that you haven't defined in those languages, it raises an error and lets you know about it immediately. The lack of good code organization is the second reason why I don't recommend JavaScript as a first language. You see, when you're coding JavaScript and learning it for the first time, a lot of the tutorials and exercises that you go through, you just embed the JavaScript on the same page with your web page and your components, and you don't spend a lot of time separating your concerns organizing your code, and reusing things. This is completely different than how the back end of enterprise applications work. There are companies out there that have literally millions of lines of code. And when you have a code base of that scale, having a type system with good organization is necessary for productivity because there's dozens of programmers, dozens of teams, sometimes hundreds or thousands of people touching that code base. JavaScript does not teach those patterns well. Languages like Java, C++, and C Sharp start out teaching you those things from the get-go. And that really helps learners when they go from hobbyist to employed to cope with that structured environment. And this is not to say that you can't write poorly organized bad code in other languages, because you can. A bad developer can write bad code using any tool in any language. The problem I have with JavaScript is that it tends to focus on getting things working and just spraying code at components instead of focusing on code organization and professional patterns that you would experience much earlier in your learning journey in other languages. And to drive the point home, one of the things a lot of beginners don't realize about becoming a professional programmer is that even though initially the syntax is really hard, you'll get over that. And the syntax will become natural, usually a couple years into your career. And at that point, you will find that solving problems using professional patterns, extensible, testable code, is the hard part of programming. So the earlier you can get started thinking about organizing and structuring your code like a professional developer, the easier time you are going to have 
in the early stages of your professional journey. Now, third, we have to talk about frameworks. You see, JavaScript developers rely heavily on frameworks to build their applications. Two of the more popular ones are React and Angular. And the problem I have with this is that so many people, instead of focusing on core language concepts, they very quickly jump into using these frameworks. And these frameworks hide a lot of what is happening. They're very convenient, they're very powerful, and that's why they're popular. But they take you away from learning the core coding concepts that you would learn if you were just writing code in the terminal, like you do when you start with languages like C++, Java, and C Sharp. And what happens is you run the risk of becoming a framework developer instead of a software engineer. And that's not a good thing. The more that you understand about the core concepts of languages and the more you can do without third-party frameworks, then the more effective you will be when you inevitably find places where those frameworks fall short. And speaking of frameworks, one of the things that really amuses me in recent years is that the latest versions of Angular use a language called TypeScript. And TypeScript is a language that was invented by the creators of C Sharp. And the reason it was created is because enterprise applications were really hard to build without type checking systems. So they created a superset of the JavaScript language that has type checking in it, and they use it to build these enterprise applications. So even the JavaScript community, a good portion of them that are using TypeScript and love TypeScript for enterprise applications, are admitting that there is a shortfall in the JavaScript language and that building things professionally at scale benefit from a type system. So why not just learn that from the get-go so that when you do move into web applications, you can pick up something like TypeScript and make your journey easier because it's much harder to pick that up starting with JavaScript than it is from starting from another language and then moving to JavaScript and TypeScript as a second or third language. And fourth, we need to discuss employability. You see, in 2023, where there's been a pullback in hiring, especially on the entry level side, you do not want to be a JavaScript only developer. And the reason for that is that because JavaScript is so easy to learn and these frameworks do so much for you, it is far and away the most popular choice for coding boot camps. So there are a lot of coding boot camp grads out there that only know front end JavaScript and they're all competing for a small amount of jobs. And if you have the option, you don't want to be in that rat race. You want to diversify your learning into things that aren't popular among coding boot camps. And these are languages like Java, C Sharp, C++, and to some extent, Python. Now at this point, you might be saying, wow, Eric, you really hate you some JavaScript. And that's not true. Languages are just tools and you wanna use the tool that is right for the job. And JavaScript is ubiquitous on the web and in internet applications. And it is a language that belongs in many developers' toolkits. However, all the downsides that I've mentioned in this video lead me to tell people that you should not choose JavaScript as your first language. It is a great second or third language, but in 2023, I don't recommend you start with it. If you instead start with a programming language that teaches you good fundamentals, code organization, and a type system, you will have a much better first step into professional programming. Happy coding.